We don't want the cross. Not for Jesus, certainly not for ourselves. It's too humiliating, too painful. And yet Jesus plainly says that just as his cross was necessary for him, so too you and I must carry our own crosses. Uh, those occasions when we must deny ourselves and, and follow him in, 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 in a lowly way. And yet what we look forward to and what cannot be compared to whatever sufferings we endure now is a glory in heaven that will far exceed them all. I'm Pastor Paul Zell. Pastor Caleb Kerbis, Vicar Peter Christie, and I serve as pastoral staff for Living Savior Lutheran Church as we look to connect God's word and his good news to the communities of Asheville and Hendersonville, North Carolina. We always invite you to join us for the full word and sacrament banquet of our worship services. They're held every Sunday morning at our two locations, 9.30 a.m. You'd be most welcome to, to find out what that's like. In the meantime, we're pleased to bring you the word in, in this particular venue. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jeremiah spoke the word of God as his prophet, proclaiming it on many occasions to people who not only hated him for what he had to say, but abused him both, both psychologically and physically. At times his cross, he felt, was too great to bear, so he looks to the Lord for, for strength and for, for commitment to the cause. Our first reading from the prophet Jeremiah chapter 15. Lord, you understand. Remember me and care for me. Avenge me on my persecutors. You are long-suffering. Do not take me away. Think of how I suffer reproach for your sake. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. I never sat in the company of revelers, never made merry with them. I sat alone because your hand was on me and you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unending and my wound grievous and incurable? You are to me like a deceptive brook, like a spring that fails. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. If you repent, I will restore you that you may serve me. If you utter worthy, not worthless words, you will be my spokesman. Let this people turn to you, but you must not turn to them. I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you to rescue and save you, declares the Lord. I will save you from the hands of the wicked and deliver you from the grasp of the cruel. The word of the Lord. The gospel of the day is also the basis for the sermon from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 16. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, 
get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever taken the Lord aside? Ever done that? Here's my, what I mean by that. Have you ever grabbed the Lord Jesus by the elbow and, 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 and pulled him somewhere where nobody's going to listen to this and then give him some advice that you feel that he needs to hear? Something like, Lord, I love you very much, but don't ever let me suffer from the illness that this, this friend of mine is suffering. Don't ever let me deal with something as terrible as that. Never let that happen to me. Ever taken him aside for that? Lord Jesus, you've given me all that I need, and I thank and praise you for that, but, but never, never let me suffer for, for months and months in, in, a, in a nursing home as I age. I mean, when the angels are ready to take me home to heaven, take me right away and never let me suffer some, some lengthy way of dying. Ever taken him aside for that? Lord, I'm, I'm glad to confess your name with my church where people support my faith and I support theirs, but, but never let me suffer hardship to my self-esteem or to my well-being from those who, who so, so terribly say horrible things against you and those who follow you. Never let that happen to me. Now, truth be told, I don't know if you've ever had a conversation like that with the Lord Jesus, but I know that the boldest of his apostles certainly did. I also know why, and, and so do you. You see, Jesus, for the very first time, had begun to explain to his disciples that the, the, the times of of, of, of glory were, were going to come to a very painful end. Uh, soon there would be no more weeks of, of, of observing Jesus uh, healing thousands of people that they brought to him with, with illnesses and diseases and disabilities. No more of that. No more crowds of hundreds and thousands going wherever he was and, and admiring the things that he was doing and the things that he was teaching. No more of that. No more rumors that Jesus, he could be the, he could be the perfect king because he can give everybody everything they've ever wanted all the time. No more of that either. Instead, Jesus starts explaining to his disciples that soon he has to go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and, and be killed. And, and that's, that's when Peter, as I imagine it, takes him by the elbow and, and, and pulls him aside and, and rebukes him, scolds him. Never, Lord, this should never happen to you. And, and uh, of course, you and I know why he said that. He, it, it, and it wasn't just, it wasn't just that he didn't want his dear friend to have to suffer. And, and it wasn't only that he, he, he didn't want his, his, his respected teacher to be killed. No, Peter was thinking of, if that happened to Jesus, what could happen to him? Because if Jesus was no longer being admired and praised by the thousands of people, then, then his disciples would no longer be admired and praised. And, and if Jesus had to 
suffer many things and, and be humiliated, then, yeah, his, his apostles, like Peter, would have to suffer many things and be humiliated. And if Jesus had to be killed, then, then disciples of his would also have to be killed. Peter put that together with what Jesus said about what was going to have to happen for him. And he was absolutely right. And, and right not just for himself and not just for his brother Andrew and, and his friends James and John and, and all the other uh, of the 12 that followed Jesus. Peter was right for you and for me and for all who follow Jesus. Jesus said that in, in so many words. He said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Huh. I don't want that. Neither do you. That, that goes against our nature. Because when it, when it comes to me and Jesus, I, I prefer the, the miracles. And, and when it comes to you and Jesus, I, I figure you, you prefer the, the victories. I like the successes. And, and we all like those moments when we can say, wow. Just look at what the Lord has done for me and given me to make my life less of a struggle. Look at what he's done for me. We all prefer that he would go on healing every disease and sickness, in, including our own and our loved ones. And, and we all prefer that he, he could give everybody everything they want for this life. But he doesn't tell us how that that's how it has to be. In fact, the opposite of how it has to be. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny herself and take up her cross and follow me. In the years that followed this conversation, Peter would learn this by hard experience. After all, Peter's cross was to put Jesus first and his wife and children second. And, and that's just not, not assuming that Peter didn't love his wife and his children. Of, of, of course he did. We have no reason to believe otherwise. But for 35 years, Peter would be very frequently apart from that. Not only on the road as he followed Jesus to, to see Jesus proving himself to be the Son of God and, and, and to go with him to Jerusalem, but Peter would be traveling as, as a missionary and as a leader of the early church. Your cross as well? Perhaps so. Perhaps following Jesus means some distancing from your own children because they don't understand that, that you, you devote yourself to, to the Lord and to his word and to every occasion to grow in your faith. And, and, and perhaps that brings about some distancing between you and your, your spouse who, who, who maybe is critical because clearly you, you, you put the Lord ahead of him or ahead of her when it comes to how you serve those who, who you serve. Peter's cross <laughs> was to give up to his business and his income. The, 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 the first time we spend a little time with Peter, he, he and his brother Andrew are, are casting a net into a lake. They're, they're fishermen. And, and Jesus comes up to them while they're doing that, and he says, come and follow me because I'll make you fishermen for people and and were told at once they left their nets and and followed him change of employment change significantly of of income your cross as well 
Perhaps following Jesus means you can no longer make your living at doing something where the business practices are not ethical or or no longer make your living at a job that that doesn't actually use the that where you can actually use the gifts that God has given you following Jesus may mean the 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 loss of of many of the blessings that money can buy and it may even mean using what you do or what you are given for higher purposes for the for the for the glory of the Lord for Peter following Jesus meant that he literally carried a cross at least that's what the understanding of the church has always been that 35 years after this conversation Peter died on a cross what, what's told is that Peter toward the end of his earthly life had arrived at Rome no I'd, I'd never ever say that Peter was the first pope the Lord has, has never given that sort of spiritual authority to, to any human being uh, but when the the, what they call the great fire broke out in Rome and destroyed two-thirds of the city. Politician that he was, Emperor Nero, needed a scapegoat. And so it, it's told that he, he, he blamed those rebellious Christians for causing the fire and put many to death. And, and one of those that he sentenced to death was Peter, executed on a cross. Might a, might a death like you, that be yours or, or mine? Perhaps so. No one knows what sort of death God has in mind for any of us. And yet it, it, it seems much more likely that the crosses you or I would carry would, would be a little different from that one. You may have to suffer the humiliation of, of, of seeming to lose an intense discussion about the meaning of life because you operate by faith in God's word and, and, and can't provide a compelling argument for an unbeliever. Or you'll have to suffer the, the anger of someone who, who blames your God for, 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 for something, something terribly unpleasant that happened to a loved one of theirs. Or perhaps you, you, you finally get that golden opportunity to, to confess your faith. You tell someone who doesn't yet believe, you tell them about God's saving grace, which saves people from sin and death and how that's a gift in Christ. And, and you say it as well as you can and you put yourself out there. And all you get in return is a shrug or a, a sigh or a shaking of the head and and let's move on to some other topic. We heard from the prophet Jeremiah, the prophet who was lonely because he, he, he simply could not join in, in, in partying with those whose motto was eat, drink, and be merry. This was the prophet who felt he'd been incurably wounded by, by the Lord God himself because he would speak about the Lord God. He would be a faithful prophet and, 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 and nobody would listen to him. He, 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 he felt that the Lord God should be like a, like a spring of refreshing water that whenever he came to the Lord, the Lord would fill him up and refresh him and cool him. And yet in his thinking, too often the Lord was like a mirage out in the desert. Uh, a, a a brook that fails, a, a spring that fails. To God's credit, Jeremiah still recognized with all believers that, that what's of this world is temporary and what's of the Lord is eternal. Jeremiah is is joined by all those who understand that that we're not going to lose our souls for the sake of some worldly pleasure. 
he understood with with all Jesus disciples whoever will follow after the Lord will, must deny himself and take up their cross and follow him and yet that doesn't necessarily make it easier to live by does it that doesn't make it always easy to understand our crosses so why do it why be willing to suffer the the pain and the humiliation of of a cross that you have to bear one reason so we can follow Jesus you see there there's an honor in following Jesus and and suffering like he suffered there's a there's an odd sort of satisfaction in knowing my Lord trailblazed a path of humiliation and hardship. What, what could be better than to myself follow him in that path of humiliation and hardship? I'd rather do that than receive things that are, are, are not so much like what he experienced. Yet as if that's not enough, there's actually a lot more. Remember how this account began, right? For the very first of many, many times, we're told Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the, the leaders of his own people and, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, this would never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Therefore, concerns of God that Jesus said he, he had to carry out. Let's number him. One, he had to go up to Jerusalem where those who hated him were conspiring to arrest him. Two, at their hands, he had to suffer humiliation and false accusations and, and mockery and, and beatings. Three, he had to suffer and be killed. But his, his being killed wasn't merely the, the end of his earthly life. His death is the payment that frees you and me from the fear of death. His, his death is the the, the, the ransom that, that liberates you and, and I from, from guilt, his death, you and I can look at it this way, is, is that's a cross that we'll never have to bear. I'll, I'll never have to carry my, my sin, my shame, my, my, my hell, and, and, and neither will you because Jesus carried that cross unto his own death. And there's one more concern, one more thing of God, isn't there? Four. He had, to, he had to, on the third day, rise from the dead. That's everything, isn't it? His rising from the dead guarantees for me and you a uh, a not guilty verdict in, in God's courtroom. Whatever it is we have said, thought, or done, guaranteed not guilty by his resurrection. His resurrection assures you and me of a resurrection on the last day. His rising from the, from the dead is convincing proof that all the things that he promises for us are, are, are true and will absolutely be carried out. His rising from the dead, simply put, is eternal life for you, me, and all who believe in his name. That's why when Peter 
took Jesus aside and, and, and scolded him. Jesus had such, such direct words. Uh, get behind me. Get out of my sight, Satan. Because Jesus understood that what Peter was foolishly saying was the devil's way of, of trying to trip him up, cause him to stumble on the path to earning our salvation. Just like the devil is constantly trying to trip you and me up but to focus only on the here and now, on the temporary, on, on how are things going at the present time, and, and, and thus lose sight of the greater blessings, the, the lasting blessings. The Apostle Paul writes about this, that, that what we see with our own eyes is temporary, and yet the devil tries to trip us up and convince us what the temporary is, what matters, when it does not nearly as much as that which is eternal. A very wise person once said, becoming a Christian costs you nothing. Living as a Christian can cost you everything. You understand that, don't you? Becoming a Christian the grace poured out upon you at your baptism, the faith that's given you as a gift, the peace that you have with God, the assurance that you're a child of God and your heavenly Father and Jesus, his Son, and his Spirit will always be with you to, to, to strengthen you. Becoming that, Jesus paid for all of that and he gives it free of charge. But living as a Christian, as a disciple, will include being willy, willing to suffer whatever crosses the Lord might place upon you, including those that are very hard to bear. You may have to pay a steep price for that. And yet, we recognize that that too is one of the things of God that if we don't understand that the, the, our crosses in this life, we certainly will in the future when, when we know, when our, our minds are opened up fully to the things of God. Carrying a cross now ultimately is a, is a blessing and an honor. And for that reason, too, we, we say with the Apostle Paul quite famously, I consider our present sufferings, whatever they might be, the crosses we must bear, as heavy as they are, I can consider them not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us when our Redeemer comes and takes us to heaven. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Living Savior Lutheran Church, we were honored that you would join us for this this feature of our ministry, if you'd like to learn more about us, uh, lsavior.org is our website where you can read about Bible studies that are scheduled, opportunities to serve, look at our church calendar, find out again wh when, when we worship. And if you'd like to support our ministry with an offering, you certainly can find that information as well. God be with you.